In this tutorial, I'm going to look at some more things we can do with the object lister. So what our model is missing is some wheels. And I've provided a wheel model for you to import. But before I do that, I'm going to tidy up the workspace a bit. So I'll take the shading off and I'll turn off the car layers so that I'll be able to see the wheel clearly when it comes in. And I can also minimize these windows using the small arrow. So now on my file menu, instead of doing an open, which would delete the car model, I'll do an import. And I'll just choose import file. And here's my wheel model, which I'll open. So I can now frame that into the view by doing a look at. So if I use pick object to select all the surfaces and then hold my shift and alt keys down, I can choose the look at option. Now if I open up the object lister, it looks like it's come in already on a layer, which is great. But if I open up that layer, I've just got a long list of surfaces. And if I use pick object, it isn't conveniently grouped together like the car model was. So we can sort that out with groups. So let's see what the shading's like. So we haven't got any colors set up. So we can use groups to set those colors up as an alternative to the way we used layers in the previous tutorial. Now creating groups create new entities. And whenever I create something new, it goes onto the active layer, which is the one shown in yellow. So I'll select this layer now so that it becomes the active layer. And then to create the groups, I'll use pick object and I'll start with the tire surfaces because they're easy to select. And then I'll say edit group. And that means now if I do a pick nothing and then a pick object again, the two tire surfaces get selected as a single object. Now this is quite hard to find in this long list of surfaces, but I can use these arrows up here to jump to the selected group. And you may need to click it a couple of times. And here's the group node which I can now double click to rename. So I'll call it tire. And I can use this orange cube icon to make it invisible or back to visible again. And this is the same as the tools up here on the object display menu, visible and invisible, just exactly the same. So I've got the rest of the surfaces to sort out. and I'm going to choose the hub next as that looks like the easiest part to select. So I'm still in pick object. So I'll carefully do a drag select and then try and get the rest of the surfaces down here. Now selecting with the left mouse button toggles. So if I drag select again, there's a danger I might deselect some surfaces. And this can be tricky to see. So I'm just going to shade the ones I've picked to check. And I'll use this orangey color. And it looks like I've missed this middle surface. So I'll just pick that now and shade it again to make sure that I've got the surfaces that I wanted. So now I've got the right ones, I can do an edit group again. And then use the arrow to find the node in the object lister and just rename it. So I'll do a pick nothing to make sure that nothing is left selected. And now even though this is the most complex set of surfaces, it's easy to drag select them. And that's why I left it till last. And I've got an alternative way of grouping that I can use, which is to use the right mouse key and choose group from the submenu. It's exactly the same as using group from the edit menu. So I can now see that easily and I'll just call that the wheel. And I'll give this another color. So if I now want to make all the components visible again, I could select the orange cubes individually here. Or I can just go up to the object display menu and do visible, which makes everything visible in one go. So finally, I can bring all these components together and create a hierarchy of groups by selecting all three of them and saying group again. And that creates a new node that has the subcomponents within it. So I'll call that Mike's wheel. So this makes it easier to pick the whole wheel with just one click when I want to copy and move and rotate it into the four positions within the car. But I can still always select the individual components from the object lister here.
So let's see where the wheel sits within the car by making the other layers visible. And it looks about the right size, but it's in the wrong place from this front view, it's in the centre. But from the side view it looks about right. So in the next tutorial we'll get the wheels positioned properly. But for now I'll just save it and I'll call it KK2. So being able to select confidently, group objects and work with the object lister are fundamental tools for working with Alias. So use this wheel as an opportunity to practice those skills and then in the next tutorial we'll be able to complete the car by getting all four wheels into place.